are you expecting? Half a dozen. Who are they? A wedding present from Moriarty. Lovely ceremony, by the way. Many a tear shed in joy. Oh, John! Yeah, just a minute, darling. Do you trust me? No. Well, then I should have to do something about that. No! Shut the door. It's about to be done. She's safe now. In my own defense, I touched her perfectly. Didn't kill my wife. Didn't just kill my new wife. Of course not. What do you mean? Uh, no, 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 no. When you just threw her off the train. I told you, I timed it perfectly. What does that mean? <clears throat> Come here. Explain! By the time I explained, we'd both be dead! Sorry, buddy, you can't use the lavatory once the train's in the station. Ladies and gents in Cyberland, come back with another film review. This time we're moving on to the sequel to Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. So with this film, when they showed a trailer, I was like, okay, I already know I'm going to see this. And I have to say, I remember this because um, my son was three years old, um, well, going to be three soon, and it was one of the last times that we went out, me and my wife, to the movies because, you know, for us, we didn't have, like some people, um, we didn't have a babysitter, really, and we didn't have anybody that could watch our, our baby boy. Um, and the other thing was, it was the last time I went to Long Beach Town Center because at this point, they decided to go El Cheapo with their food and their price range, and I just said, that's it. Haven't been back there since, and that was over 11 years ago. You know, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. So, with this film, it picks up exactly right after the first film, and. We now get to see who Moriarty is. We now get to see what his what his intentions are. We also get to see uh, Watson get married, and we also get to see um, 
Sherlock actually losing somebody he cares about for the first time and how he handles it. Um, that was interesting. Uh, we also see the members, I mean, use, not the members, but we also see Sherlock and Watson kind of uh, travel outside of London for the most part. It takes place in London at first, but then towards getting towards the halfway point, we start to see them gravitate to move out of the, the country, or uh, Britain for that matter. Um, I felt this was the first time too that Sherlock could bleed. I think this is the first time we, we saw Sherlock actually be very vulnerable and be susceptible to getting hurt. Because the first film, it, it didn't really happen. So, um, that was interesting. We also saw that the guy he was dealing with at Moriarty had no... Um, He had no honor. He had no way of conduct. Like as far as he was, as far his objective was to do what he wanted, and he would hurt anybody if he if he could get away with the kind of thing. And he had no um, false pretenses about what he was willing to do. Um, my rating for the film is an eight out of ten. Yes, sirs. And I think the reason why I didn't I didn't rank it as high as the first film was because. The mystery behind everything was, was very, I don't want to say anticlimactic, it was just like, okay, whereas the first film was a little different, the person behind the curtain. Um, I almost felt Moriarty wasn't as... Utilizes maybe he could have been. I almost feel like maybe Moriarty. I almost feel like the second film should have had Moriarty in it, but you didn't see him yet. Or if you did see him, he was in the film, but you don't know who he is until the third film or something. I just felt like that surprise of who he was and what he looked like, it was a little disappointing. I kind of felt like they should have saved that for a third. They should have saved that for the next film because Moriarty and Sherlock Holmes. That 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 um, that uh, friction and that uh, element of them, be, the 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 way they intertwine, the yin and the yang, is like Joker and Batman. You know, Lex Luthor and Superman. I always feel I almost feel like Sherlock and Moriarty were the first. Art, archetype or structure before uh, that comic books will um, that comics grab from uh, because the not saying uh, Moriarty was a psychopath like Joker but his intellect you know same thing with Lex their, their intellect and I feel like this was the, the prototype for what ended up becoming certain villains in the comic industry uh, I feel like you know that that's where that's where vi certain villains get grabbed. They, the elements of them are grabbed from uh, Moriarty. So I, um, that was a concerning part. And then the female lead, because Rachel McAdams wasn't the female lead in this one, she was all right. She wasn't bad. I just she was just like, eh, she's okay. You know, I just she wasn't as appealing to me as Rachel McAdams's character. Um, as, as Sherlock likes to call the woman, Irene Adler. She just didn't have the same female, the strong female presence that I felt Irene Adler did, and that was disappointing. I think that's why I didn't rank it as high, because I really liked Irene Adler in the first film. I thought she was great. And the, the, the character in the second film was like, she's all right. She wasn't terrible. She was just like, eh. Okay, so she's, that's, she's there. Um, action was cool. Um, I felt this film was darker than the first, definitely. But I like the first one better. And the second one's a nice addition. It's not a huge step down. It's just... 
I think Moriarty was underused a little bit. I think we should have had other people working for him, and I don't think Moriarty should have been introduced the way he was in the film. I think we should have we should have saw him, but we didn't know. They they should have had an actor that was just going to have a cameo. But and that's Moriarty, but you don't know it's Moriarty, and it's never hinted that it is yet. And then when the third film comes out, then we finally see who it is, and then they can play back those scenes where this character, like, you could have him have a couple scenes in the second film, and then in the third film he has a couple scenes, but then you have the man behind the curtain, and that's, this is who it is, it's who it's been the whole time, and you saw him in the second film, you saw him in the third film, which he, he just, and finally, it, the door opens to, okay, I felt that would have been better, um, as opposed to how they introduce him in this film, and, and how... I just felt his introduction was just. I, I just. I, I, w I would have been. I would have felt better if it would have been a surprise. I mean, his viciousness was, was uncanny. His ruthlessness, how he carried, conducted himself, and even his attitude towards Sherlock when he wounds him at one point was just. That was very interesting. So, yeah, if you saw the first one, we watch the second one. It's not a huge step down. It's just I like the first one, but it's still a good film, nonetheless. So with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next one.